Okay, everyone, it's great to see you and welcome back on Deep Dive with Dave. My name is Dave, your host and your learning guide in this new episode. I'm super excited that you're joining me for this Deep Dive episode. I will be introducing our featured expert in learning and development very, very soon. If you are listening on uh, Apple, then go ahead and subscribe so you get uh, notified when I post a new Deep Dive episode, also on Google and Spotify and many other platforms. And if you are tuning in on YouTube, which I highly recommend to do, then why not subscribe and let YouTube know that you want this kind of content? Because on the YouTube channel, you also have the timestamps and the uh, learning resources and all the show notes. As you can see here in the description, uh, you can check out um, all the different seg uh, sections of this deep dive episode to make your learning more enjoyable and to maximize your time because I know you're busy and uh, I know you want the key information that you're looking for. If you missed the last deep dive episode, actually it was the very first deep dive episode that I did uh, with Kelly Palmer. It was all on the uh, skills gap, uh, how to close the skills gap. And if you want to check it out, the um, box here in the top right corner, just click that box opening up now and you can check it right after this video. In this deep dive episode, uh, I want to introduce to you a very special person, uh, Miriam Nalen. Yes, she's Dutch, that's a Dutch name. Um, and as you may or may not know, I'm half Dutch, half Irish. And uh, Miriam, she is head of the global learning design and learning sciences at Novartis. She's worked for awesome companies like Accenture here. Accenture is one of the companies that I, one of my my favorite companies, uh, tech companies that is, uh, they're huge. They're a consulting company. They consult around the globe on you know tech technology, um, uh, emerging technology initiatives. Really awesome company. Um, they're at about a half a million employees now, all spread across the globe. Super awesome company. They're doing amazing things. So Miriam has uh, worked over there, and uh, she currently works at Novartis, which is also a huge, huge company. Everybody should know this company. Um, uh, they are focused uh, in uh, the medical industry. Um, you know, they're reimagining medicine. You can read all about Novartis and Accenture. Um, I'll share the links in, in the show notes, of course. And of course, she's also worked at Google. And I was going to just go to google.com. Uh, I don't think you need to see a website for, uh, for Google. I think we, 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 go, we visit that website every single day, don't we? Um, but she's worked at Google. And uh, let's start there for a moment before we dive in a bit deeper, because I do have um, a blog post that I, of hers that I want to share with you uh, in just a moment. Let's just have a look at uh, Miriam's uh, about section. Her overall ambition is to drive change in learning and development, uh, to improve the impact on how people do their jobs today, and number two, enable them to prepare for the future and stay relevant. Very important. Um, so she wants to shift L&D from intuition-based to research-based and from order-taking to value-driving. Now, this is really, really crucial to understand that L&D is going through a huge, huge shift. And Miriam is the person to learn from because she has a huge background, very, very deep scientific background. And at the moment, learning and development, yes, there is a lot of uh, science in learning and development, but it does require a slightly different approach for learning and development and a mix of the two, quantitative and qualitative approach. So we're going to learn from Miriam in a moment more about that. Uh, she has had extensive experience in needs analysis, learning strategy design, development, peer assessment, and evaluation. And she's very well-versed experience in instructional design and design thinking methodology. So I really wanted to cover um, uh, Miriam, uh, because I know, uh, at least in my network, and I see around uh, around the globe on LinkedIn, I do see a lot of interest in instructional design. Um, young people, you know, 
all different age groups now are getting into in instructional design from different career paths and transitioning into it. So I thought it was interesting to cover. And since learning and development is going through a huge shift, uh, I think it's really uh, relevant. So you can check out Miriam's profile on LinkedIn. Um, as I mentioned, she's uh, she worked at Google for some time. Um, she delivered 15 global e-learning videos, you know, up to, you know, thousand plus viewers. So she's very well versed in that. As I mentioned, she was at Accenture. She uh, was leading the end-to-end -end learning experience design for internal uh, Accenture clients, et cetera, et cetera. And where she currently is at, at Novartis, she's basically responsible for all their uh, learning design, integrating it with data-driven um, approaches, right? And one more thing I wanted to mention, which is very interesting uh, that I learned about her. Uh, she is the Senior Learning and Development consult Consultant at Learnovate Center. Now, I have the website over here. I'll send it to you um, because Learnovate is, um, is a basically a research and innovation center focused on educational technology and learning technologies. Lots and lots of uh, researchers are based there and it's based in Dublin. I have a lot of family in Dublin, uncles and aunties and things, and that's where she's based. So maybe one day, maybe one day, uh, I get to interview uh, Miriam Nealon in, in Dublin, Ireland. Uh, that would be great if I could bring that interview right here on Deep Dive with Dave uh, with you and uh, have a chat with Miriam. The, the next thing I wanted to share with you is her book because she's also since recently an author. She's she's become an author. Um, I believe she's written multiple books, but this is, uh, I believe, the, the, the one that was released, I think, about a year ago, if I'm not uh, mistaken. It's called Evidence-Informed Learning Design. It's all about creating training to improve performance. I will share with you some of the... Um, um, uh, the reviews uh, at the end of this um, deep dive episode. So please hang in there. You can also um, follow uh, Miriam Nealon, Nealon um, on Twitter. She's relatively active on Twitter as she is on LinkedIn. Um, Miriam N right there. So you can follow her there. I'm following her. And uh, while you're on Twitter, uh, maybe now is also a good time to let you know that I'm also on Twitter since recently, since about a month or so. Uh, Dave Online 3, number 3, that's me. Now, let's go to Miriam Nalen's website here at 3starlearningexperiences.wordpress.com. As you can see, um, I'm on the blog post here, and here is the article itself. And I really wanted to share this article with you titled, Becoming a Learning Organization Equals continuous learning because, you know, it's December time now. I'm pretty sure you noticed, you know, Christmas is just around the corner. We're coming very close to the new year as well. And a lot of, you know, organizations around the world are reviewing what happened this year. I mean, what didn't happen this year and now thinking of ways of how can we take a giant uh, step forward, a giant leap forward, I was going to say, in 2021. How can we figure out what did we achieve? What didn't we achieve this year? Where are we now? And where do we want to be in the future? So that's why I, I thought this article was so interesting and well written by uh, Miriam Nalin herself. Um, so let's dive into it. She says here, hopefully learning professionals realize by now that acquiring content and implementing formal learning solutions, for example, training, aren't enough to support organizations and the people who work there to be successful yeah so it's really up to us yeah to build the capacity as she rightly says to encourage and make use of that learning um, to create uh, you know that positive influence uh, organizational performance uh, job satisfaction innovation and so on Watkins and O'Neill 2013 so we need to, you need to, uh, the, the, the listener, the, the viewer of this deep dive episode needs to step up. We need to step up right now. 2020 is almost done and to help organizations get there or to help your organization get there. It's not just about acquiring content. It's much, much more than that. I really want to emphasize that that is the key point here that Miriam Nealon is starting off with. It's not about just getting the content or it's not just about getting onto a bandwagon or something is or, you know, getting some content that is popular just because another company is doing it. 
I hear that so much in the space that, oh, we hear that, you know, this topic is popular. We must do it. And implementing formal learning solutions. Okay, we need training without really asking why do we need training? What, what, what is the objective? What's the purpose? She asks a question here. What does the research and organizational learning and the learning organization tell us about what we can do effectively, holistically support learning in organizations? What can we do? You think, okay, organizational learning and learning organization, you think, okay, they're the same things. Well, they're used interchangeably, but they're two different things. As it rightly says here, as uh, Miriam uh, points out here, they are two different things. They are not the same, okay? So let's have a look. And this is why I found this article so interesting and useful. Uh, organizational learning refers to what an organization is actually doing when it comes to learning, okay? There's not one definition, but um, there are three different perspectives or lenses in this case. There's the behavioral lens, which is about, you know, what is the organizational doing uh, to adapt to the changing environments, 2020, the pandemic, what are we doing based on the experiences, you know, based on new routines, etc. It can also be the cognitive lens, okay, so it can look at um, how the current knowledge and the new knowledge leads to improvement, what's talked about as tacit um, versus explicit learning. So tacit knowledge is the knowledge, you, you don't know how you know something. Yeah, but you just know it. Yeah, but uh, but explicit knowledge is that you can actually explain the expertise or the knowledge you have. So you can you can ex you can describe it. You can you can explain the process, the steps involved. That's explicit. Uh, and then finally, the cultural lens. So that's all about you know the vision, the, the the values, history, and the memories shared across the organization. So remember, the behavioral lens, the cognitive lens, and the cultural lens all refer. Uh, to the organizational learning, what they're doing when it comes to learning. But what about um, a learning organization? Here, she says, uh, is the idea that an organ organizational learning is about the current state right now. That's the current state. In contrast, a learning organization reversed to an organization with the necessary emphasis added very importantly, to necessary organizational structures and capacities to create an environment that will stimulate knowledge and ultimately financial performance. Watkins and Kim 2018. So, so this uh, learning organization is about what an organization wants to become. Okay, so that's really important. And that's when it comes to understanding the gap between the current and the desired state, i.e., where you want to be in the future. And then we're talking about learning interventions, right? Because that's what Miriam Nealon is all about. There's also a research paper that I can link to and you can download the PDF yourself. Um, it's um, Table 1, Watkins and Marsick's model, 1997, the seven dimensions of, of, of the learning organization. And here you can see, you can read it yourself. Continuous learning is one dimension, inquiry and dialogue, team learning, embedded system, empowerment, system connection, and strategic leadership. So I'll include that. These are the seven dimensions. So this model, uh, the Marsic and Watson model, includes seven dim dimensions or action imperatives that are required for the organization to be capable of continuous learning and transformation. And this is really the best model that you can find uh, out there. There are different models that you can research as she's provided here, 11. Uh, there are 11 learning models that she's talked about here, and she found this model the best. Um, so I really strongly recommend to read up on that. Uh, if you're planning an intervention uh, shortly or in uh, next year sometime, do spend time checking it out. There's also a survey, um, how to diagnose the state of, of the learning organization and beyond. It's called the Dimensions of a Learning Organization Questionnaire, the DLOQ. Uh, there's a snapshot of it over here. It should take um, about uh, 10 minutes. It's done not on an individual level, um, as an individual. It's done as a, as a, uh, as a team um, a questionnaire. So you have, to bring, you have to work with the team on this one. But it should take about 10 minutes to fill in. 
Uh, unfortunately, the link uh, to the actual questionnaire is down at the moment. So I'm going to contact uh, Miriam uh, and ask her to provide us with the link so then I can share it with you um, and you can you can take the survey yourself. I think that's a great, uh, a great value add right there. Moving on to more resources that I want to share with you in this deep dive episode before we wrap it up is a recent podcast episode on Speaks, which is a podcast I strongly recommend uh, for you to subscribe to an Apple podcast as well. But it was a fantastic episode. Uh, it was all about designing the learning experience and defining complex skills. I found this podcast really interesting because um, Donald Taylor talks to uh, Miriam Nalin and asks her in detail about how she goes about, how she creates the learning experience and how she designs that in terms of complex skills. And let me give you an example. And as you know, as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, Miriam Nalin, you know, she's worked at, uh, she works at Novartis, she's been at you know, Google, she's worked at Accenture. So she's coming from a very highly uh, scientific background and high you know, tech background. So in those companies, um, she's had to create a lot of learning experiences for complex skills. And one of the skills she talked about in this episode with Donald Taylor was the emerging technology as uh, of blockchain technology. And as you know, I'm a big proponent. I'm a big fan of blockchain technology. So Miriam N Nalen, she takes us through the steps in, okay, number one, sitting down with a subject matter expert and, you know, having a very long detailed chat um, and deep interview with a subject matter es expert on you know, on blockchain and going through a case study. So by using deep interviewing techniques uh, by extracting key um, information from the subject matter expert, then she's able to create a worked out example. And then from there, from the worked out example, she's able to you know, start to put the building blocks of the learning together for people in the field in the company, for, for example, in Accenture. You know, when except with when an employee is to, is having a a primary meeting with a client, how does that uh, employee at Accenture? How can they go about identifying opportunities in what the client is telling them that perhaps blockchain technology is a solution, is potentially something that they can offer the client? So, in other words, that is adding value to the client, but also uh, offering. Uh, Accenture in this case, the chance to make more income, to uh, capitalize on this emerging technologies, blockchain chain technology, by training the staff in these complex skills through creating this learning uh, learning design that Miriam Nealon talks about so eloquently in this interview. So do check it out. It's really, really interesting. Okay, so let's go over the uh, the new book that Miriam Nealon uh, wrote recently called Evidence-Informed Learning Design, which if you are an aspiring learning and development professional or you're in learning and development right now to any capacity, or if you're looking to create training next year, then this is a book to add to your reading list uh, so that you can enjoy some deep reading, inspirational reading on creating training for your organization throughout Christmas and into the new year. It's evidence-informed learning design, creating training to improve performance. Now, I really strongly recommend it. And I uh, yes, I, I'm guilty. I still haven't read it, but it's definitely high up on my list and I strongly recommend it to you. Let's quickly read what it's all about. Here we go. So learning and development um, programs are too often based on fads, the latest trends or learning designers' personal preferences without critical evaluation. Evidence-informed learning design allows learning professionals to move away from this type of approach by showing them how to assess and apply relevant scientific literature, learning science research, and proven learning techniques to design their training in a way that will make a measurable difference to employee performance and overall business success. So this is critical, and we talked about that as well um, in her recent article. And also it's in Miriam's profile. We are now shifting in L&D 
to uh, the, the way it should be really. So it's got lots of tips, lots of tools, lots of examples in there for you. And it enables L&D and training professionals to save both time and money by ensuring that efforts are focused on design learning, learning that's proven to be effective. So I think every company out there can benefit, every learning and development department can benefit from this uh, type of book right now, going into Christmas, going into 2021 after a crazy 2020. It's been, oh my goodness. Let me take you through some quick reviews here. Um, Patty Shank, PhD, instructional design expert and author, had this to say, a clear roadmap for finding, judging, and applying proven evidence-informed methods to transform training outcomes. Clark Quinn said, a great service to learning design and a clear guide to the necessary barriers and core elements of evidence-informed learning. And Jeroen J. G. von Marienburg said, a solid foundation for making training work, a must read for all learning professionals. So put it on your list. I will put the link below in the show notes. I do want to share with you um, a video, a Skype interview Miriam Nealon had as well. So uh, Guy Wallace uh, interviewed uh, Miriam Nealon a while back um, in February 2020. So it's quite recent. And it's a great interview with Neelan. You should really watch it. You get to uh, really understand more about her career path and like her academic background, her time in Mexico and how she developed her career in America and you know how she found her way back from uh, back to Dublin uh, because she was you know she was based in Holland and how she changed um, her major. She she was in uh, you know speech therapy. In, in Groningen in Holland and you know she went all around the world and uh, now she's uh, she's 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 found herself in in Ireland uh, where I hope to meet her one day and interview uh, her in Dublin and post it here on Deep Dive with Dave. If you missed the last Deep Dive episode with Kelly Palmer on closing the skills gap, please do check it out. Uh, the link is uh, pop, popping up here. And thank you very very much for watching. And I will see you very very soon. Bye for now. And as always, upskill.